Hi, Jamie Davis, the pod medic for Innovations in Patient Care. We're here at EMS Today 2013 with the first of our interviews with the EMS 10 awardees for this year. That event is sponsored by GEMS and Physio Control, and we really want to uh, thank them for the support of this particular project and, and recognizing the innovations of some of our best in EMS. And I'm excited because I have Rich Price here from Pulse Point. And uh, Rich, this is a great uh, innovation and a great uh, application of connecting CPR and cardiac arrest and AEDs so that they get to the right place at the right time. But before we get to that, tell us a little bit about your background and, and how you're associated with EMS. And well, I just finished uh, 33 years in the fire service. Uh, just finished uh, as the fire chief for the San Ramon Valley Fire Protection District, a uh, uh, fire-based uh, EMS system, fire department. And uh, now running the Pulse Point Foundation and the application, which was originally developed and piloted in San Ramon Valley Fire and trying to take what we've learned there and maybe spread it across the country and, and hopefully even beyond that. So. For the folks that are listening that maybe don't know what Pulse Point is and what the Pulse Point Foundation does, tell us a little bit about this application. So the application is to help get citizens uh, to where CPR is needed. Uh, so people who are trained in CPR download the application and opt in, say, I'm willing to assist in the time of an emergency. And when somebody calls 911 and reports somebody who's unconscious, unresponsive, likely needing CPR, uh, the 911 center will dispatch resources as normal, uh, but at the same time, the application that's running in the center will look to see if there's any of these trained citizens that are nearby, uh, essentially within a quarter mile or so. Uh, and if there are, it will notify them. It will tell them that uh, CPR is needed, uh, where the patient is located, and it will also tell them where the nearby AEDs are. And the idea is to get CPR started immediately and get those AEDs out of the cabinet and onto the patients uh, while the crews are still en route. That's really impressive. Uh, and, and how many systems are using this now? Uh, we're in more than 100 communities and we have more than 200 sort of at some level of the process uh, coming on board. That's exciting. Now, how, how difficult is it for somebody or a system to implement something like this? Is, is, the, is the software easy to work with, uh, with whatever CAD systems they're, they're using? Right, so the interface to the CAD is, is one of the hurdles. Um, we have interfaces to most of the CAD systems today, uh, and over the next year, we hope to get the rest of them. Uh, so you have the interface as, uh, as, as one component, uh, but there's two other ones. Uh, knowing where all your AEDs are in your community is uh, a bigger challenge than I would have expected. Mm -hmm. But I think we've done a very good job of uh, promoting AED use and getting AEDs out uh, in the community, but we haven't done a good job of keeping track of where they are and making sure that they're in good working order. And if you're going to be dispatching your citizens to AEDs, you need to know where they're at and you need to have a good idea that they're going to be reliable when you get there. So um, having good knowledge of your AEDs in your community is, is another uh, uh, hurdle. And then I'd say last is community outreach. Uh, for this to work, you um, have to let your citizens know that it's available and you have to be talking about it and promoting it so that people actually download it. One of the things about the Pulse Point app is uh, it works best in systems that are already good. So if you've done a good job with your public access defibrillators, if you've done a good job training citizens to, uh, to know CPR, uh, and you have effective community outreach programs, then the app is gonna be very effective. But it's no shortcut. It's, uh, it's gonna work best in the best systems. So you still need to have that full systems approach with bystander CPR, all the chain of survival links in place. Pulse Point gives you the ability to maybe shorten those links a little bit and, and, and have them react a little bit closer together. It, exactly. Um, we all know that uh, for to move the needle on sudden cardiac arrest, uh, it takes uh, it takes a systems approach, and there's uh, every little thing adds up to an effective system, uh, and. You know, having a 911 center that can do pre-arrival instructions and, and give CPR instructions and having bystanders that are trained and, and having AEDs. Uh, but one of the things that we've learned after 50 years of training people in CPR, we still only are seeing about a quarter of the time when paramedics are arriving that CPR is in progress. Uh, AEDs, the numbers are even, you know, worse. Uh, we think that 
uh, we can take all the good work that's been done around AED placement and CPR training and really amplify the effects of those good practices. Um, I mean, it's much more likely that you're going to be nearby a cardiac arrest than you're going to actually be able to witness it. You know, the application really redefines what a witnessed arrest is. Mm -hmm. You only have to be nearby now. Uh, and if you are presented a map in the app that shows you where you are, where the patient is, and where the AEDs are, it's going to make you think about those AEDs and it's going to uh, lead you right to it. It's a dynamic map that we present and you can just walk right to that AED. Uh, and, uh, and grab it on your way to the patient, or um, you can tell somebody else at the scene to go get the AED and where it's located. We also know that if we can bring more people to the scene, we're better off, mm -hmm. that people have more courage if they have other rescuers with them. Uh, and we know that CPR is physically very demanding and having more rescuers there is gonna make a big difference. So really reaching out to the public and getting more bystander CPR, we can encourage them by telling them, hey, by being part of this system, you're gonna have some help coming from other people just like you. That's right, and I think people like the idea behind the app. I think we have seen people wanna volunteer in this way. They've taken CPR training, maybe they've taken uh, community emergency response cert training, and uh, they wanna help out, they wanna make a difference. Uh, most people who have CPR training never get the opportunity to, to save a life, and they'd like that opportunity, and, and the app um, gives them a way to volunteer, kind of volunteerism 2.0, a very passive way to say, you know, I'm willing to help put their hand up and be part of the community in a bigger way. And uh, we're seeing, you know, very, very good adoption rates in the communities. People download the app, they opt in, and, um, you know, they, they want to be part of the solution. Certainly response times today are not going up. They're getting worse, mm -hmm. if anything. Even in good systems, we know response times can be seven or eight minutes. And in the a sudden cardiac arrest time frames, you know, seven or eight minutes is an awful long time. And if we can uh, source citizens that are in the immediate area, essentially within walking distance, um, they can get there, get CPR started, get an AED sourced, and when the paramedics arrive, they're gonna have a more viable patient. And when that patient arrives at the hospital, we know all the interventions and innovations that are available in the hospitals today with the cath labs, right. and, uh, but they gotta arrive alive and most of them don't today. Uh, and we think the application can make a big difference in that regard. Do you have any data? I mean, are there, are there any um, outcomes, improvements that you've seen in some of the systems that have been using Pulse Point the longest? We have a clinical trial just gonna start in the city of Toronto. This okay. is gonna be a three-year study funded by the Heart and Stroke Foundation of uh, Ontario. And they developed a survey uh, that goes to the citizen rescuers. So we know right now um, about four rescuers on average respond on our activations. We've activated on more than 800 actual cardiac emergencies. We have survey data from those responders. Uh, so we have a pretty good idea, even though the, uh, the clinical trial uh, hasn't begun just yet, we've been using that survey now for probably about six months. So we're starting to see a lot of the results, and those results are going to have to come out of the, uh, of the researchers. Mm -hmm. uh, but we definitely are, are seeing citizens respond, getting CPR started, getting AEDs uh, deployed, um, and we're very, very happy with the results that we're seeing. We had one recent incident uh, where we had eight responders, uh, and when crews arrived, they had uh, people doing CPR, alternating CPR, directing the crews in, sourcing an AED, and had extra rescuers that were clapping to 100 beats a minute and encouraging the other wow. rescuers. Very different scene than, you know, one out of four times. To not, come certainly a scene not like one that. I've ever seen for a cardiac arrest. That's right, so the crews said it was just an amazing scene to come, to come upon. Excellent, excellent. How can people get this app? Is it available for all mobile devices, uh, just iOS or? Nope, it's available uh, uh, in the uh, 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 Apple App Store. It's also available in Google Play for uh, Android devices. Uh, anybody can download it. It's a free application, but it only works in communities that have deployed the application. And that's where the foundation comes in. So the foundation's responsible uh, to help any agency, any public safety agency who's interested in getting the app to help them through that process. So our, our audience here can, can find out more information by going to? Go to pulsepoint.org, the website. Uh, our Twitter uh, name is uh, at pulsepoint. 
Uh, we also have an interesting uh, Twitter account called at 1,000 lives a day, recognizing that 1,000 people a day die from cardiac arrest. If you follow 1,000 lives a day, you can see the app activations in real time. So every time the app is activated, you see it, and you see also how many citizen rescuers uh, were notified. Wow. And the app is activated several times a day now. Excellent. It's downloaded by more than 200 people a day, so we're, you know, we're growing that army out there. Well done. Well, we'll definitely have links to that in the show notes for this episode so people can Great. follow up and find out more information and maybe bring Pulse Point to their system. Absolutely. We'd love to have them. Well, Rich, congratulations again on your award as an EMS 10 2013 awardee. And uh, what do you think about the EMS 10 awards and, and this type of recognition? Do you, do you think that it's something that uh, should be continued and move forward? Absolutely. I mean, for me last night to be at the uh, at the gyms and, and physio control hosted dinner, it was just an opportunity to network with some of the uh, the greatest minds in EMS today. Humbled to be in that class, but to to be able to see the people that are really leading this industry and to to shake their hands and get their business card, it was a fantastic opportunity and. Uh, uh, just couldn't be more more thrilled and appreciative of the opportunity. And now you're part of that prestigious organization club of, of, of the EMS 10 awardees. And Humbled get by to it. clap somebody on the back next year. Very honored. Great. Rich, thank you very much for being on Innovations in Patient Care. Great, Jamie. Thank you very much for thank the opportunity. You. And I want to thank all of you for checking out this episode of Innovations in Patient Care. I'm your host, Jamie Davis, the pod medic. You can find this show and all of the episodes over in the iTunes store and also posted along with all of the other episodes and a lot more information over at the Physio Control Facebook page, and we'll provide links for that for you. I'm Jamie Davis. We'll be back soon with another episode of Innovations in Patient Care. In the meantime, please remember to stay safe and stay tuned here to Innovations in Patient Care.